Hey guys, this is Slimin. Today I'm going to be reviewing the awesome Celestron Motor Focuser. This thing is a huge upgrade over a traditional focuser. It'll improve your images for sure. You'll be able to get a better focus. Visually, it's, it's awesome for visual use too. So I'm super excited to review this and uh, let's jump right in. So when people warn you to not order stuff because, you know, fear of the cloud gods, it's even worse when you back order something. It is literally rained for two and a half months or snowed or blizzard or whatever for two and a half months since I back ordered this thing. I'm not even kidding. Uh, the ground is literally sopping wet with no end in sight. Oh uh, yeah, look what finally came. I'm really sorry about ordering that motorized focuser, guys. I really did not mean to bring this on you. <laughs> oh. So seriously though, look how cool this is. I'm on the moon right now and I've got my hand controller on the focuser tab and if I drop the focus down, no wobble at all. <laughs> it's so cool. Uh. One thing that I really like that Celestron did with this motorized focuser is they provided three different ways to power it. So you can use the aux cable and power it from your mount. Uh, and that will, you know, allow you to use the hand controller to control the motorized focuser, which is what I'm doing right now. Uh, you can use a computer, so if you have a USB A to B cord, uh, you, can, you can do that, and that cord needs to supply at least 900 milliamps of current. Or you can use just your standard 12-volt uh, DC input, and that needs to be, you know, about one amp or a thousand milliamps. So you have three different options that you can use to uh, provide power to the motorized focuser, which is pretty cool. If you intend on using the Celestron hand controller to control the motorized focuser, you need to update the firmware to at least version 5.30.8333. That is the version that introduced focuser support to the hand controller. Now, also introduced a few bugs, so it's smarter if you just update it to the latest version, which fix those bugs. Uh, if you don't know how to use the Celestron Firmware Manager, um, you can watch my video here on how to do it, um, and that would be for RS-232 versions of the, the hand controller. Uh, if you have the new uh, mini USB version, you can click right here and watch that video. Um, once you're done, uh, if you've done it successfully, you should be able, able to go into the menu and the focuser should pop up and you should be able to control it from the hand controller. The Celestron motorized focuser works great for planetary imaging and for that I use a Skyris filter wheel and what's nice is there's enough space that I don't even have to rotate my filter wheel but even if there wasn't enough space you could easily rotate your filter wheel, lock it down and there's still plenty of room so that everything can be used properly. Using the motorized focuser with a DSLR is actually really easy too. The only problem you'll run into on smaller Schmidt cast grains is you're gonna run into it. Uh, and so you can either, you know, change the position of the camera or you could change the position of the focuser and it should work just fine. Or you can, you know, just flip your camera upside down and then all your resulting images you can just invert them and they'd be normal so either way I mean it it does work out it's really just a preference thing so you wouldn't have this problem though on the larger Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes only the smaller ones for those of you that do visual astronomy or astrophotography using fork mounted Schmidt Cassegrains you know probably as well as I do just how hard it is to focus these things I mean when you're turning that knob the whole image is shaking and you really can't tell if you have a good focus. And that's especially apparent when you're doing astrophotography. It's really hard to get a nice focus with Schmidt Cassegrain. Um, and that's where this motorized focuser really shines. I mean, you can get right on your target, uh, adjust the focus, and the, the image doesn't shift at all. It's really amazing. And even on these single fork arm mounted telescopes uh, where it's not as stable, you still don't get any shaking at all. So visual astronomy or astrophotography on fork mounts, uh, this motorized focuser is really awesome. If you're going to use the motorized focuser with a fork mounted telescope, uh, you'll want to make sure that you'll install it off to the side or diagonally or something like that so that when you view objects at the zenith, you don't run the motorized focuser into the base of the mount. Uh, so just to demonstrate when the telescope is 
is moved all the way back in its saddle here, uh, you actually have enough clearance to view objects at the zenith. So I'm just going to show that now. As you run through the zenith, as long as it's mounted off to the side, it should have no problem going to the zenith position. As you can see, so that's straight up there, and it cleared it just fine. Calibrating the motorized focuser is really easy. Uh, so when you turn on your telescope, you just go to the menu button, and you then click on focuser and hit enter. Now you'll have several options, so you know just go to calibrate and hit enter, and then all you have to do is hit enter. And what it's doing when it's calibrating is it just wants to know where the end of travel is on each side. So it takes about five minutes. All you have to do is hit enter and it does everything for you. So it's really neat about this motorized focuser though. It's just the level of precision you can get out of it. So if you go into the hand controller menu, you have a couple options. You can move the position to a certain number or you can just simply you know move it in and out but for every one of these numbers the focuser turns one one thousandth of a turn so basically right now i'm at sixteen thousand so it's been turned sixteen times essentially so if i just move the focuser position okay i just moved it sixty one units so that just means i turned it sixty one one thousandths of a turn so you can see this little tiny nick in the focuser. And for every thousand units that you change, you rotate the focuser shaft one time. So if I change the focuser by exactly 1,000 units, you'll see that nick go all the way around once and return. So watch it. There it goes. And it's back. So I just changed the focuser from 15,000 to 16,000 units, which corresponds to one complete turn of the focuser. Now you can see I'm really close up on the moon here. Just adjusting that focus ever so slightly. Trying to tighten it up a bit. It's pretty decent. When you're turning it, you know, one one thousandth or two one thousandths of a turn, you can really get some precision out of it. it makes working with a Schmidt Cassegrain a lot easier. Yeah, not too bad. What's also really nice is Celestron has uh, self-retaining covers uh, integrated into the motorized focuser. So whichever you know power jacks you're not using, you just you know simply cover them, cover them up and you don't have to worry about losing these because they're self-retaining. The other really nice thing about the motorized focuser is the volume level is actually not too bad. It's about the equivalent of an electric razor, so not bad at all. It's also really nice about this motorized focuser is it doesn't add a ton of weight to your setup either. Um, it weighs in at 15 ounces, so just under a pound, which isn't going to make a big difference on most setups. On some it could, but not on most. So you know, it's just all those little things that kind of add up to show you that this is really a, a quality motorized focuser that Celestron put a lot of thought into. So really good R&D on it. It looks good, has really cool features on it. So what telescopes are compatible with the motorized focuser? Well, any Celestron Schmidt Cassegrain telescope manufactured after 2006 should work, with two exceptions. Uh, the first, the 5 inch Schmidt Cassegrains will not work with the motorized focuser. And currently, the 9 and a quarter inch Edge HD Schmidt Cassegrain will also not work with the motorized focuser. Specifically, in the case of the 9 and a quarter inch Edge HD, there is a clearance problem between the focuser and the uh, focal reducer combo. So currently it's not working, but I'm going to guess that in the future, Celestron will try and fix that problem so that the motorized focuser is compatible with all of the Edge HDs. Um, but yeah, right now, normal six inch, eight inch, nine and a quarter inch Schmidt cast grains, it works just fine with. The 11 inch, the 14 inch work great too, 
um, all of the Edge HDs besides the nine and a quarter inch it works with. It will also work with the Celestron Row Ackerman Schmidt Astrograph series. So the eight inch Rasa it works with no problem. The 11 inch Rasa it will work with and the 36 centimeter uh, Rasa the motorized focuser is also compatible with. But in the case of the 11 inch Rasa to get it to work you actually need to get an adapter kit from Celestron. But with that kit, the motorized focuser will work with the 11 inch Rasa. Lastly, it will also work with Celestron's 7 inch Max Sutov Cassegrain telescope. And I'm really excited about that because I really want one of those Max Sutov Cassegrains. So that's kind of just a uh, comprehensive list of what the motorized focuser is compatible with. It's really nice to get really close with a planetary camera and not have that shakiness that goes on with, you know, a standard focuser. So let's just touch this up here. That's getting worse. I'm going to go the other way. Oh yeah, that's, that's looking really good. Uh, awesome. I'm going to zoom in one more time here. See if I can touch that up even more. Not very steady conditions, but obviously that's what stacking's for. I'm going to say that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and zoom that out. It's pretty decent. What's awesome is even with the Barlow lens installed, getting a really sharp focus is really not that hard. So this is a 2.5x Barlow, you know, grab the hand controller, focus in. Oh, it's really bright, so let's uh, help that out here. So even with the Barlow lens, you don't get the shaking, which really, really helps. This motor focuser is awesome. After doing some reading, it appears that some people don't like that the motorized focuser can be controlled through the hand controller. Uh, you know, they prefer that it comes with its own hand controller so that you can directly access it. Uh, I'm kind of the opposite, actually. I really like that I can control the motorized focuser through what I can control everything else with. It's all just in one spot, and I like that. Uh, you know, when you're doing astrophotography, I don't know about you, but I don't change my focus that often. I mean, as you go through the night and it gets colder, the air density changes, you may have to touch it up. But it's not very frequent, and so it's not really a big deal to, to use it for astrophotography. And then for visual use, what's nice is the hand controller remembers what tab you went to last. So if I go to the menu tab, it focuses right there because that's where I went last. And then I click enter, and it'll say move in and out because that's the tab I went to last. Pick my speed three, and then I can adjust it. You know, I adjust it where I want, and I'm done. You know, I can go back to the menu, go to deep sky, find what I want, slew over there, and if my focus isn't where I want it, just hit menu again, and I'm back to the focuser. It's really not that difficult to navigate through here. Um, so I kind of like that. It uses the hand controller. Uh, if it had its own controller, I mean, yeah, that'd be fine, but it's still not very hard through here. And you know, if you don't like the hand controller, you can always control it through a computer. So you could, you know, just be sitting by it and adjust it that way if you wanted, if you're doing uh, astrophotography. Or, I mean, for that matter, it's ASCOM compatible as well. So you could be three or four hundred miles away and control the motorized focuser. So there's various ways that you can control it. I really like the hand controller. The computer works fine too when I'm, you know, doing planetary imaging. So I don't have any complaints about it. I think it works great. What I really like about this motorized focuser is you can just tell that Celestron did their homework. Uh, really good build quality, number one, but I mean, you can power it three different ways. So, you know, hand controller, computer, or even a remote site. The precision is also there. I mean, you have the capability of turning the focusing shaft one one thousandth of a turn, which is pretty awesome. 
Uh, and it, you know, if you upgrade telescopes, it's not proprietary to just one telescope. So if you, you know, go up one size, you know, you usually can just pop it off and stick it on the next one, which is really nice too. And the other thing that I absolutely love is it's very responsive. So, you know, right when you push the hand controller button, it's moving. You don't have to wait, which also helps you get a really good focus. So with that awesome build quality, great aesthetics, overall, it's just an awesome motorized focuser. I can't recommend it enough. All right, well, that is my review of the Celestron Motor Focuser. In my opinion, this is a massive upgrade for your Celestron telescope. It makes focusing so much easier and it's just really quality built. So well done, Celestron. It's a great product and I'm very pleased with mine. So thanks so much for watching and clear skies.